For this video, we are going to be talking about the basics of imaginary numbers. We'll start off with a brief little intro about what they are and how they come about. Then we're going to talk about imaginary numbers and what happens if we raise them to certain powers using exponents. And then finally, we're going to see some equations where the only way to solve them is to deal with imaginary numbers. So with that in mind, let's begin. What you see here before you is the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2 or negative 2. And basically what that means is if you have 2 times 2 or negative 2 times negative 2, you're going to get the answer of 4. And square roots work wonderfully for positive numbers. But the problem comes in where if we want to find the square root of negative 4. And you can't just say that it equals, because it does not equal, negative 2. Because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, not negative 4. And this is where imaginary numbers comes in. Whenever we have a negative number underneath the radical, we're going to be dealing with some imaginary numbers. Now, how do we handle this? When we're working with the square root of negative 4, the easiest way to handle this is to break this up into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. We know what the square root of 4 is. That's 2. And the square root of negative 1 is where we have our imaginary numbers, and what that is is the letter I for imaginary. So if we break this down into a square root of negative 1 and the square root of 4, our answer actually becomes 2i. And i is not a variable here. i has a very specific value. It's the square root of negative 1. But since that technically doesn't exist, we call it imaginary. So the square root of negative 4 equals 2i. If I had, let's say, the square root of negative 9, well, the answer would be 3i, because we would have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3, and this is i. Okay, hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this. Let's try a different one. With the square root of negative 20, just like before, we can break it down into the square root of negative 1, so we get our imaginary term, times the square root of 20. But 20, unlike the other examples, is not a perfect square. So we have to do what we did in our previous video, which is reduce or simplify this radical. 20 can be divided by 4, which is a perfect square. So 20 can be broken down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 is the square root of 5. And then don't forget about your negative 1 square root, which is just i. So all of this combined through multiplication is 2i times the square root of 5. And that is our answer there. It is perfectly acceptable to have a number in front of the i if we need to have it. So now that we've talked about the basics of imaginary numbers, let's talk about raising them to some powers. Here I have four basic exponents that i could be raised to. First of all, we have i to the 0 power. And just like a regular number, or a real number, I should say, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So i to the 0 is 1. Anything raised to the first power is itself. So i to the first power is just i. Now is where we got to start looking for a pattern. i to the second power isn't just i squared, it's actually negative 1. And the reason for that is, remember, the square root of negative 1 gave us i. So if we square both terms, we're going to get negative 1. 
So i squared is negative 1. Now i to the third power is the same thing as negative 1 times i. So we're just going to have negative i. That is the i to the third power. And finally, if I have i to the fourth power, which will be the last one we talk about really quickly, i to the fourth power is positive 1, because that's the same thing as negative i times i. Okay, very good. Now, if you notice, it repeats itself. We start at 1. Then we have i, then we have negative 1, then we have negative i. And then we go back to positive 1. And if I were to go to i to the fifth, let me erase this here, so we have some room. If I were to go to i to the fifth, it's going to be the same thing as i to the first, which is just i. If I were to go to i to the sixth, it's going to be the same thing as i squared, which is negative 1, and so forth and so on. i to the seventh is negative i. And this pattern continues on and on forever. So in your homework, you're probably going to see something ugly like, let's say, i to the ninth. Now, you could easily write this out like I've been doing and realize, oh, i to the ninth is going to be in the same category as i to the fifth and i to the first. So that's just going to be i. But what if I gave you i to the 25th? I don't really think you want to write out 25 terms. So here's the shortcut for dealing with large exponents and imaginary numbers. When we're dealing with a large exponent, remember how we said every four terms the pattern repeats. So how we handle a large number like this is we divide it by four. Let's say we have 25 divided by four. I'm going to do this using long division, which isn't a bad idea for these. Four goes into 25 six times, which is 24. Subtract and we get one. Now, normally, we don't want remainders, but in this case, we do. The remainder tells us what power we're actually going to be dealing with. So i to the 25th is actually the same thing as i to the 1st, which is just i. Let's try one more example real quick just to show how it works with even bigger numbers. Here I have i to the 274th power. It looks daunting, but remember, all we're going to do is take this exponent and we're going to divide it by 4 to start off with. So 4 divided into 274. 4 can't go into 2, but it goes into 27 6 times. Sorry about that. 6 times, so we got 24, subtract, and we have 3. Bring down our 4. 4 goes into 34 8 times, which is 32, subtract, we have 2, which ends up being our remainder. So i to the 274th is going to be the same thing as i squared. And what was i squared? Negative 1. There's our answer. If you're trying to figure out what power the imaginary number is being raised to that is simpler than whatever it is, but you're using a calculator, you're not going to get a remainder. You're going to get something like either 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or 0.75 if it doesn't go into it evenly. So if you're dealing with dividing by 4 with a calculator and you get 0.25, this is the same thing as remainder 1. It's the same thing as remainder 1. If you get 0.5, it's the same thing as remainder 2. And if you get 0.75, it's the same thing as remainder 3. This can be a handy little shortcut if you aren't very confident in your long division skills, but you still want to use the shortcut I gave you with dividing the exponent by 4 to figure out what part of our pattern it matches up with. This video is starting to get a little bit long, so I'm going to start trying to wrap it up.
In this last section, we are going to be solving equations using imaginary numbers. So I've put in front of us x squared plus 4 equals 0. You're going to treat this just like you would any other equation. We're going to get the variable alone. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. That gives me x squared equals negative 4. And now I need to get rid of the exponent. Remember, to undo an exponent, we take a square root. So the square root of x squared is just x. And now we've got the square root of negative 4, which we did at the beginning of the video. The square root of negative 4 is the same thing as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So our answer is x equals 2i. That is the solution to our problem. Pretty nice. Let's try another one. Actually, before I move on, we should also make sure we note that 2i is one of the answers. You also have x equals negative 2i. Because when it, every time you take a square root, you're going to have a positive and a negative answer. So it is x equals 2i and x equals negative 2i. Now let's move on to another example. Here our equation is a little bit more complex. We've got 2x squared plus 6 equals 0. Still, just like before, our goal is to get the x all by itself. So we can start by subtracting 6 from both sides, which gives us 2x squared equals negative 6. Then we can divide both sides by 2 to get the x term alone. And we have x squared equals negative 3. And excuse me while I draw a little arrow so I have some more room up here. So I've got x squared equals negative 3. Just like in the last example, to get the x squared undone, we take the square root, which means we're going to have a positive and a negative answer. So this becomes x, and square root of negative 3 is going to be i root 3 and negative i root 3. And remember, if you're not sure why it's i times the square root of 3 and negative i times the square root of 3, the negatives, or square root of negative 3, remember, is the same thing as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3. This is i, and negative, or sorry, the square root of 3 can't be simplified, so it stays the square root of 3. And we have a positive version up here and a negative version every time we take a square root. One more example, and this video comes to a close. This last problem is a little bit of a doozy, but if you can handle this, you can handle anything that is thrown at you. Just like before, let's get our x term alone, so we'll start by subtracting 12. We get 2 thirds x squared equals negative 12. Now, I got to get rid of my fraction here. There's a couple different ways to do it. I'm going to break it down into two steps to hopefully make it easier for you. First, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator. So times 3 and times 3. When I multiply the fraction by the denominator, the denominator cancels out, and we are just left with 2x squared equals, and negative 12 times 3 is negative 36. Okay? Now, this should look a little more familiar. Get rid of that 2. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. And I have x squared equals negative 18. I draw my little arrow up to the top because I ran out of room over here. I've got x squared equals negative 18. And like we've done and was the purpose of this video, 
take the square root of both of them. Square root of x squared is x equals, well, negative 18 is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 18. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 18, this one can be reduced using our skills from the last video. So this breaks down into the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which means I have 3 times the square root of 2 times i. So when we combine all of this, we have x equals 3i times the square root of 2 and negative 3i times the square root of 2. And those are the final answers. I hope you found this video helpful. Good luck with your journey with imaginary numbers.